that so I just wanted to make a quick little video and see how it felt to make a little bit of a vlog or something just that I can I, I want to experience uh, what it's like to to film make and I've um I guess <clears throat> some things that I've been really interested in recently are how to get those um, those clear cool shots that are just different um, while I voice over because I want my videos to be more cinematic than they are um, anything else so I think that I want to make cinematic shots with um, with like the non square uh, saying involved so you divide the camera into about nine squares and then if you are on one of those lines at the intersections then it usually comes out looking pretty cinematic or pretty good <clears throat> and so i just want to experiment with that and that's what this video is So I'm planning on making a McDonald's run, but it's getting really, really close to 1030. And um, because of that, I might have to order lunch, but I really wanted breakfast today. So we're gonna try to hit breakfast and get like maybe two, two biscuits. Uh, I prefer like the McGriddles cause they're, I don't know, they're just so amazing. Um, it's a green light right now. It's not going. Oh well. So that's kind of crazy. I just uh, just saw a guy that um, had lost, he didn't have enough gas and so his car just stopped in the middle of the road so I, I tried to get out and help. Um, but as I was getting out to help, he pulled out a gas jug out of the back of his truck and he started filling it up. It, it was just the fact that he lost gas. Um, there was nothing wrong with the truck, thankfully. So, yep, that was interesting. But I'm going to try to get those two McGriddles now. So I got my food, and the lady at the window, she was so nice. Um, the one that took my order, eh, not so nice, but that's okay. The the lady at the window, though, she um, she smiled at me. She had my food out the window before I even got there, and then uh, whenever I whenever I was talking with her, I said, um, have a good day and tell your staff I had a good day. And I, I watched her go in and tell her st staff. She said, this man said, have a good day. And I, man, that, that makes me happy. Um, cause it put a smile on some of their faces and, um, I guess that's a good thing. So now we're going to go to the park and I'm going to eat my two biscuits and maybe get some cool B roll. All right. So got my coffee, got some biscuits and so I have a couple things that I want to do today, and um, the first thing I want to do is I have a sermon that I'm preaching Wednesday. I want to finish that up, and uh, I want to edit this video and just see what video editing's like because I have absolutely no clue yet. And. Um, Hopefully the internet's gracious to me. Does it think I'm crazy? I don't even know if I'm gonna put this out. So I just got through eating and everything at the skate park. Um, but while I was there, I had a couple people talk to me, and uh, they were just talking to me about like how the world is and how we need to follow God. And some people that I was talking to that. Uh, I, I've been talking to these people for a long time, um, probably a year, about a year now, and um, and I didn't know if anything I was doing was producing positive results, but it turns out it was the entire time, and um, I just got news that these two people that I dearly love um, are finally sober. 
and I don't know how long they've been sober or how long they will stay sober and I believe that they they will um, because they are pursuing God like they love Jesus I, I just think that they had some misconceptions and some uh, some struggles and things and and I have some misconceptions and some struggles and things and as Christians we're always just helping each other and loving each other and being patient and serving one another and they've served me well they've showed me some things about the uh, the street life that I have no clue about and they they've shared these things with me it's opened up and broadened my perspective of uh, of, uh, of how God works and who he loves and how he loves them and um, God's with us every single day and we should be so grateful to wake up and honestly just to get to breathe and just to look up outside and smell uh, smell the fresh air and the birds chirping hearing them in the morning as we wake up with our cup of coffee um, that God so graciously let us make um, I guess that's all I have to say but that was a good uh, good trip Things like this happen to me all the time. I don't know why I don't record them more. Um, but, you know, I guess it's kind of vulnerable in my life to let people know what I'm doing and what's going on. And it's hard uh, to, to put this out there. So I want to do everything to the glory of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, I just got to G DG and it's really close to my church and everything but I I just realized that I don't actually know if we're having staff meeting today so I may have come to town for nothing but that's okay I still got some footage I still got um, some things to play with with uh, camera editing or video editing which I didn't before and I've, I've got no experience so that's good um so yeah I don't know what I'm doing right now I guess I'm gonna figure out if um if I have staff meeting today and if I have that then I'm gonna go to it um and it, right afterwards I'm gonna dig into the Bible and I'm gonna bring you with me so uh be waiting for that turns out uh staff meeting is not happening today so I didn't have um any any uh time to to talk or discuss today um but that's okay and um and i'll just go i'll just go back and do my bible study and everything and you know what it's okay i got some footage i'm really happy that i get to uh i get to edit a video and i've not done that um ever really so i had a little bit of experience here and there but not 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 near enough so I'm ready uh, to, to get home and go through my Bible study share with you guys what I learned from it and uh, and then we'll uh, we'll end the video I guess and then I'll just edit it out and everything uh, yeah that'll work so I decided that I would um, just talk a little bit and I guess kind of express some views on some things i'm starting to realize that um that people today in this world we have no concept of waiting like years and uh and, and like decades for things to happen like um the only thing i can imagine is like ultra rich people building like a hotel or something like that's the only way i can think of people actually waiting a long time for something to get done but none of us get to experience that and even them um 
like they'll probably get updates on it consistently and not actually have to go out and visit the place to see see what's going on there um, but that's a funny way to look at it but uh, I'm talking like our Amazon purchases they come in a day a day uh, two days three days um, the most we have to wait is is like a week for something and, and we get frustrated when we have to wait a week seven days really that's that's not a big deal and I wish that we knew how to enjoy the things that we wait for also because you know we a lot of times we're just ungrateful even when we do get the things that we want we just we don't thank God we don't um, thank him for the people who made it we don't uh, we don't appreciate what we do have in this world and um, it's easy not to it's easy to forget that we can have joy in in the little things and the menial things and the things that don't seem very grand we can just enjoy every day you know um, every day doesn't have to be some big event but every day is a movie it's a small uh, film it's like a short film in the story of your life and of the life that God's created you to live and uh, ultimately it's God's story all of our stories um, God already already knew from the beginning and, and um, he knows what his will is and how it will be done and, and every day we live uh, we get to see how that plays out what we believe how that plays out um, what we believe matters so much and I don't feel like we express it very often because one we don't have any we don't have a lot of connections in uh, in this generation in this landscape socially and economically um, economically there used to be a lot more face-to-face -face partnerships now they're just online um, in social aspect there used to be a lot more face-to-face friendships but now there are a lot of them are online um, and we don't consistently get to meet up with those friends uh, because of how fast-paced life can be now and you know what maybe it's good just to slow down as a man and as a woman I guess too it just to just to think like what am I doing and is this useful to the world is this um, is what I'm doing going to create a lasting impact in the lives of the people that I care about? Is what I'm doing just for me? Is what I'm doing uh, for my family or for my friends or for the relationships that I do have? Because let's be honest, life doesn't mean much if every single day you wake up and you're only thinking about yourself and your bank account. It doesn't matter. Your relationships are what matters. The people that you love, the people that you cherish, um, doesn't matter how many. It's a uh, quality, I guess. Y you know, like you have life um, in Christ already. So the amount of people that you talk to and see and reach, um, that's really in, in the relationship building process. Uh, and, and if you're a good friend, maybe you'll have 10 friends. If you're more um, genuine and you don't think you can keep up with a lot of people, then maybe you'll have five friends. Um, but if you are selfish, then you might only, uh, you might only have family or you might only have um, the people who have made a commitment to not leave you but that you would leave in a heartbeat that is terrible that's narcissistic and um that's a tendency that i think i've had a little bit in my life and i regret in some areas uh, we all strive to be more like christ to be loving to be kind to be generous um so let's try to live that out so i'm just gonna start out my little bible study with um some praise music and some worship uh, music and, uh, and just bow down and, and give myself to the Lord here. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory 
How he gave his life on Calvary to save the wretch like me. I heard about his going, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me So I think this is one of the first videos that I've actually made um, where I've shown kind of like what I've done throughout a day and um, I'll be honest I have to make this video like I'm talking like with like you guys the you the people watching the video a little bit and then more so I have to make this video like it's me and God and like every time I turn the camera off I'm just talking with God, so it's, uh, it's kind of how I have to think about it. You gotta have some good coffee before you get into a Bible study. I don't know why, it's just tradition. It's starting to yell at me. I'm gonna get it pretty even. And then once you get this water in there, you kind of, uh, you kind of make sure that you keep the water in it. Um, you don't want to let the um, the coffee run out, and you don't want to fill it up too high. But um, yeah, you just kind of pour it in, and you make sure that the grounds are touching or touching water, basically.
make sure that each of them have like that foam on top and you want to try to keep as much water as you can in there um, as you do it without it being like too much water being too watery looking see right now how I have that foam on top you want to try to keep that throughout the entire pour all right so I'm actually done pouring and you can see how I kept that foam on top the entire time you want to make sure you do that um, it'll help the the coffee actually go through smoother in general and um, and also like I don't know what it is but it just helps the flavor for you to continuously pour that water and not get let it get too low don't know why but um, it just works so today I read through Ruth and um, I honestly like it was it was pretty good there was a lot of emotions that I had through it um, it is a very sweet book and just good ending like it's it seems like your typical Hallmark movie almost <laughs> it's it's that kind of feeling um, but basically the the story of Ruth um, she had <clears throat> Naomi, so it, the, it begins between um, Eli Melick and his wife Naomi. Now Naomi had two sons by Eli Melik, and they were um, Mahlion and Shalion. And those two sons, um, they got they they moved. Um, the whole family moved from um, Ephrathath, and um, and then they moved to Moab. Um, and that's kind of near the city of Bethlehem, so just keep that in mind because that's important to the line of Jesse and David and then ultimately our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But um, but what happened is they, they moved to uh, Moab. Now, Eli Melech, he died in Moab. And um, soon after they got there, and then 10 years later... Um, <clears throat> Well, I won't go 10 years yet. So, Naomi's sons, uh, Shelion and, uh, and Mahlon, they got married to Ruth and Orith. And Ruth and Orith were pretty godly seeming women from what we know of them. They stuck very closely to Naomi. And I can only imagine the bond they had after what I'm about to tell you. Ten years after they married these women, the men died in Moab. And and so these three women, three women left, Naomi, uh, Ruth, and Orif. And Orif was uh, Shalion's, and um, Ruth was Mahlon's. So... These three women went back to Bethlehem, that's important, keep that in mind, Bethlehem, um, where uh, Naomi told them to go back uh, to their, their land and everything after their husbands had died. They, uh, Naomi said, go back, go find another husband. I don't have enough time to have more kids that will be old enough to marry you. There's, there's no way that you'll wait for them to be able to do that. Um, so, so that's exactly, that's exactly what they didn't do. Um, Naomi wanted, uh, Orif and Ruth to leave, to go back, to marry, and, and they didn't do that. Um, they actually did quite, or Ruth did quite the opposite, Orif did do that. Um, Orif went out and she, she went back to her land and hopefully she got married, I, I'm not sure. But Ruth, we actually have, uh, a beautiful line that gets leads all the way to Jesus from Ruth and what happened was is they were redeemers in the time of uh, of this story there were redeemers and tr the tradition in Israel was if you had a, you had a widow and a man who owned land and, and things in uh, the area then that widow would be able to be redeemed by someone who was a close relative um, if they didn't have a brother, then it would be like a, a cousin or, or whatever it was down the line, or maybe not a cousin, but just uh, someone down the line that's a very close relative was considered a redeemer if they chose to marry the uh, widowed woman 
and bring her and uh, and own the possessions that the the man had. They had to buy it still, and so they had to buy. Um, they had to buy this land back from uh, the, the the widow. But since Naomi, uh, since her son was married to Ruth, that meant that Ruth was technically a, an Israelite. Um, she stuck beside. Naomi, and she said, hey, your God will be my God, and your people will be my people. I'm not leaving you. Or if she left, she went to go find a husband. There's nothing wrong with that. But Ruth said, I'm sticking by your side, Naomi, no matter what happens, and I will die with you. She literally says, I will die where you die. Um, and, you know, Ruth, she was she was that kind of woman. She was a hardworking, faithful, loyal woman. And so that's kind of where the story picks up. Boaz in Bethlehem, um, he sees Ruth working out in the fields, not, not with the reapers, but following behind the reapers so that she can get the extra grain that they missed or dropped or whatever it might be. So basically she was not getting much of anything. And she she wasn't getting much of anything, but... Um, what ended up happening is Boaz saw her and then he actually helped her. He said, Hey, go work with the women. And, uh, and these, these people will, they'll leave behind barley. Um, the, she didn't know that she didn't know that they were leave, going to leave her barley behind and everything. And, um, and so she continued to work until evening. And, um, she talked with Naomi a little bit in between that, but, uh, Boaz, uh, he he ate with Ruth and he's he uh exchanged bread and some food with her and even sent her to Naomi with some more food um and then Naomi ate and so the beautiful thing about it is that we see that Boaz is a noble man um he comes and he tells his workers uh God bless you and then they tell him, uh, "God bless you back." I think, I think they say something a little bit different, but that's pretty much what it was. God bless you, um, uh, and you just see that he was a noble guy. He was a guy that you would want your daughter to marry. He was a, a guy that had uh, had morality and wasn't going to just go off of a whim in life. He he knew what he was doing, where he was doing it, why he was doing it, and um, he also. You know, he he had a sense of respect for everyone around him. So think about that and how you can apply that to your life. But that the rest of this story, it's just a it's just a hallmark movie, pretty much. But it's it's not it's not like those. It's real. It actually happened, and it's in Jesus's bloodline and it's it's a beautiful thing but uh so Boaz see how sees how hard Ruth works and then through him seeing how hard Ruth works and everything and and then he even already knew a little bit about her because some people have been sharing with him who this Ruth was who this young woman was he told his men um not to touch her and then uh and then Naomi told her, hey, just keep working with the women so that they don't. Uh, she must have been beautiful. But uh, but anyway, so she's a hard worker. She's loyal. She didn't want to go after anyone but Boaz. So she was faithful. She was committed. Um, and Boaz was a respectable man. And we know this even more so than what he already did, which was send her out with food and everything. We know this even more because... Um, Naomi tells Ruth to go to the threshing floor at night after he drinks and after he eats and his heart's merry and full and he goes and sleeps um, whatever's on his if he falls asleep in hay for example whatever he wherever he ends up sleeping uncover his feet and then lay down at his feet and so Ruth says okay um, yeah I'll do this and, and then Naomi says hey when you do this he'll tell you uh, what to do next? And she says, "Yeah, I'll do it. I'll I'll say I'll do everything that you told me exactly." 
And so she goes. She goes. She goes and she does every single thing that Naomi said exactly. And man, that's obedience. That's what you want in a wife, someone who will who will execute things well just like you said them. That that was a beautiful thing, right? So we already know that she's going to be a good good character for the future of um of this this marriage, this uh acquisitional marriage in a way but still it was very noble and respectful because of what Boaz did next now whenever she went and slept at his feet he could have woke up and he could have had her right there she said spread your wings over me for your redeemer to me and he said uh, <laughs> um, I appreciate and uh, thank you for all this goodness that you've done to me but there's another guy and He's a redeemer um, also, and he's closer kin than I am. So uh, respectfully, he allowed her to uh, sleep there the rest of the night, but he didn't sleep with her like he could have. He, he didn't take her to himself like he could have easily done um, and was kind of the intent, if we're being honest. And, and I don't necessarily know if that would have been looked down upon in that time, but um, it was wrong. If he would have, and he was noble-minded enough not to do that. And so the beautiful part is he nobly responds with, uh, with saying, Hey, there's someone who I owe the right to tell about this situation so that I don't wrong him. How noble, how respectful was that? And so he goes, he tells the man, and... The man wants to acquire the land and everything, but then he, he uh, Boaz tells this man, hey, you're going to have to take Ruth to the Moabitess. And then he says, no, I can't do that unless I, that would that would make my line, um, uh, it would it would mess up my line. It would, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It would, perp it, it would hurt his line and so he couldn't do that he couldn't take um ruth as a moabite wife um and who knows what the reason for that was but that means uh that boaz when he was talking to ruth he made a promise and he said hey if this guy doesn't take you then i'll marry you i'll take you and i'll uh, i'll buy your land from naomi and so he does that he after he meets with this man the next day and they figure out like hey i'm not going to buy that land and and you can have it they make a covenant they exchange sandals which is what they did in that day but um they make this covenant or i say covenant but um more it was more like a respect it was more like a a, a handshake and something that you won't lie on and he gathered the the elders and everything so they could see and make sure that this wasn't just a lie or wasn't just a, a fib or something you know there was accountability um so that's another reason it's respectful is this man is wise enough to be noble-minded enough to have accountability in his decisions and um so the redeemer doesn't end up doing uh taking ruth and so Boaz said, I will do it. And, and he, uh, he does. And he takes Ruth as a wife. And, um, and everyone blesses the marriage. And you can see that she is a worthy woman. And the other people say that. And they know that she is a worthy woman of, of uh, Boaz to marry. And um, what a beautiful thing. And she actually ends up bearing a, a child. And... Um, and that child is that child was Obed. Sorry, it just took me a second. I had to look. Um, the child Obed was born, and Naomi nursed and, and took care of him, and. Uh, and they basically said, like, hey, Naomi's had a child. That's that's kind of how the mindset worked. Ruth had the child, but Naomi, uh, um, since she was a lot Eli Melech's uh, uh, wife, then it was kind of her child in a way because he was redeeming that bloodline, that, that family um, in that way. And, and so this um, this all works just so 
so beautifully. And it, it goes from Perez to Hezron to, uh, to Ram to Amenadab to Nashon to Salmon and then Boaz and then Obed and then Jesse and then David. And then David all the way to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is our kinsman redeemer, just like Boaz was to this uh, Elimelech's family line. David is, um, is a precursor to Jesus, and Jesus was our kinsman redeemer. He was the one who redeemed us uh, when we were broken, when we were hurt, when we were living in darkness. He redeemed us, and His blood spilt out so that we could live in the light. In a very dark world where we will suffer, and we will experience pain, and we will have regret in our lives at times, but we can always press forward, looking to when Jesus comes back and returns. And He is our hope, He is our life, and He is the one that we live for. And so, keep hope in that, but... This story is about the nobility uh, of, of Boaz and what we should honestly as men and even as women, um, especially as women with Ruth and how she worked hard and was faithful and obedient, um, see. And, and then Boaz, how he was noble-minded, how he was wise and thoughtful and he had accountability and, and he, was, uh, he was not quick to do things without... Um, regarding he, he was not uh he was not narcissistic at all he he thought for other, he thought about other people for their sake and so that's something really good that we can take from this and so um yeah i got my coffee and everything and just wanted to make sure that I, um had enough b-roll and everything maybe i'll cover up some of the uh words that i've said with this but um I think I might just bounce in and out of this and then uh, the other things that happened through my day. I think that would be good and helpful. All right, bye guys. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe and drop a comment and just talk to me. I'd love to have a conversation with any of you. So um, thank you so much for watching.